Okay, so uh, I'm an independent scientist. Good. So I'm an independent scientist, um, and uh, I've been working in this field for uh, well over a decade, so a decade and a half thereabouts. Uh, I'm Canadian. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I started out really in the food and fiber side of things. Um, I've been developing products uh, within the health within the hemp industry for for that long. Um, experiment with different products, looking at the waste streams, and trying to commoditize and monetize those um, those products. Um, so I guess the the thing that I've been asked to to speak about when I came down here was actually some a product that I developed was a um, a hemp from bat a battery from hemp. So oh, a, you took, you made a battery. Yeah. Yes. So that's right. Okay. Tell so us about that. all right. So um, if I had a picture, I could show you, but it, I have a picture of the thing. But basically, I designed a brick. Okay. So like a regular red brick that you'd see on the side of a house, and then within that brick is where I store that energy. So as I was, it's been ten years ago thereabouts that I started working on on combining different materials together, and I. Uh, combined basically biochar and lime one day and found it to be conductive and that began me thinking in regards to this and that's basically a conductive biocrete so biocrete is when you're taking uh, plant materials and then creating kind of a concrete with that and so I discovered that yeah it was it was conductive and then made a small battery from it and got me to thinking oh wow can I store energy in concrete for example um, and went forward with that and created this red this red brick uh, one to a to adjust for a few of the issues that I saw with actually storing energy in a wall like this. It's like, well, if it breaks down, how do I change the, do I have to change the whole wall? So I made smaller units. And so I made one, I designed one to be about 4.5 volts. Okay, well, yeah, 4.5 volts and about five amps so that I could demonstrate and show that you can actually charge a tablet from this material, right? So it's just direct charge and away you go. And then, you know, as it drains out, then you have a small solar panel, charges it back up again, right? Um, yes, for example, so, so the idea, I, the concept that I developed was called BIES or building integrated energy storage. Okay. So say, for example, you had solar panels on your roof, they would charge these red bricks on the outside of your building. Okay. And just using red bricks. So it kind of, so you can visualize the surface area. Right. And then, so each, if each one of those bricks, right, was five volts, five amps, and you have a thousand bricks on that wall how many volts, how many amps could you store on the outside of that building, right? People are saying, well, how, is it as powerful as lithium? No, not necessarily because it, it doesn't have to be because if you're using the surface area, the surface area is going to compensate for the energy density, if you want, of that brick, right? And so that's where that kind of concept grew out of. Very good. How did you get involved in the show here? Um, well, Cree, I guess one of the organizers, he actually contacted me through uh, my website, and uh, that, that would be ABBRI.org. And um, I imagine he may have heard me speak somewhere else. So I've spoken all over the world in regards to this. Uh, so that's how I kind of got in touch here. So like I say, you know, I speak all over the world. I publish in, you know, Hemp Today and uh, other journals and stuff like that. And so he contacted me that way and said, look, girl, can you come down and, uh, you know, speak to us about some of your expertise, right? So, and this all has to do with the food and fiber side of things and all my, uh, I guess my industry knowledge that I've acquired over, over the, my, yeah, over my career, so. Describe yourself as a wacky scientist. Yes, some people have, they, they call, me a, call me a mad scientist, you know? Yeah, well, like today, I just am a compliment in terms of the innovation and the creativity and the ideation. Like being able to create, like create this out of yeah. Well, and this is just one of the many things that I actually do. I mean, you know, I, I do hemp plastics as well, but the, the hemp plastics I made are actually made pure hemp. I use nothing else within that, that matrix except hemp. So, you know, I'll combine, for example, the cellulose from the stalk and the plant, uh, which is a paper-like thing. And then I take the seed oil, right, which is, which is a drying oil, combine the two together, and it can make a plastic. Oh, it's been great so far. I love it. For our first, yeah, everything's been handled really, really well. I mean, a few hiccups here and there, but that's normal. This is the first time, first go at it, but I've, I've loved it. You know, it's been great, great networking. Uh, people are great. You know, it's, it's always beautiful to see this industry introduced, you know, to a new country. Uh, and, that's, and that's the thing. 
you know, because I've gone, like I say, to many countries around the world and actually helped it to actually develop some of this stuff. Final question, what do you think about the industry now starting in Costa Rica? I think it's fantastic. I, you know, I, I work for a plant, you know, I travel the world and I promote cannabis, you know, and like I say, when I speak cannabis, people always right away think, oh, marijuana, you know, or, or something like that. And how I start off my talks sometimes, I actually, I make this analogy, I draw this analogy, I say, look, you walk into a supermarket and you see a potato, right? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Right. Then, you, then they say, why not vodka? Because vodka is, comes from potatoes. But when you say cannabis to somebody, the first thing that comes to mind is marijuana. And this is the sort of stigma we need to change, right? And change that, that mindset. And this is where I've been kind of going around and actually talking about it. So it's very good when you know countries start introducing it. Now they're struggling though to get it legal because there is so much stigma still attached to that. And we have to get past that. Education, education, education is so important for people to understand that cannabis, yes, there's a drug component, but it's a very small part. When you actually look at this plant and what it can actually do, you know, the building materials, the food, um, a whole range of other things that have nothing to do with the drug, but everything to do with the plant, right? So it, it's, um, yeah, I think, I mean, I call it the fantastic plant. There's no other plant on the planet that can actually do what cannabis can do. It was a pleasure meeting you, Carl. Thank you so much. It was my and, pleasure. Uh, keep enjoying the show and uh, we'll see you soon. Great. Thank you very much. Have a good